Ladies and gentlemen, on this wonderful, beautiful day, Ed Smith. All right. Well, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, you can take your Bibles and go to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. Um, this teaching is entitled, Building Your Why, Our Joy. And uh, the purpose of this teaching for me was specifically to help me in, you know, my walk with God and to just get, find my why. And what I mean by that is the purpose, the, the, the motivating factor for why we do what we do, why we continue to stay faithful and stand on the word, why, you know, you need a why in your life with every aspect that you're successful with, you know? And so what I, what I define that as is, is, having the motivation, having the, the reason for doing what we do, the actions that we take. And we'll start in verse one of chapter two in Hebrews. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Because of all the things in chapter one, you know, therefore, you know, because of that, that's the reason why the word therefore is therefore. We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. You know, I've heard it said many times in, in the course of studying the word that it's one thing to become a champion, whether in any course of your life. It's one thing to become a professional baseball player. Jim was just mentioning um, the new catcher that came up for the Rockies and and uh, he did something that nobody's ever done before yesterday. His second day as a professional, you know, baseball player was uh, hitting two, two run home runs. You know, that's a great day. Of, of, you know, it's never been done in the history of Major League Baseball over 2000 players that their first Major League home hit was a home run, a two run home run. So somebody was on base and that's a, that's a great start to his career. It's one thing to have a great start. It's another thing to be, to maintain our championship, to maintain what we have in the word and in our relationship with God. And to do that, we give the more earnest heed to the things that we've heard. We give the more earnest heed. We take more time to develop, to continue to, to do the things that we need to do to be faithful, you know, so that we don't allow them to slip. Um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Building your why. One of the great aspects of why we do what we do is building that, building a motivation in our life. And a great key to that is joy. A great key to having motivation in our life is joy. So we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Our faith, our, the word our is in italics, shouldn't be there. The author and finisher of faith, or the right way of believing, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. And when I started thinking about what I need to keep going when I want to quit, this verse came up to me and it, and it just was remarkable again as I looked at this to think about Jesus Christ, to think about his life being and looking at facing the cross and all the things that were going to go on and, that he knew about. You know, he, he had joy. You know, and that joy was set before him so that he could endure the cross. It's not happiness. Happiness and joy are completely different. You know, happiness is the things that are around the world that, you know, give us 
happiness. <laughs> you know, it's different than joy from a standpoint of joy is an inside job. We're going to see this, that it's a spiritual quality that we can continue to develop in our lives. So verse one, let's go back through this again to see the how, how some of the keys of how to build in our life, the motivation and the things that we need to be successful. Verse one, wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That great a cloud of witnesses, as many of us know, is all of the believers and the heroes in chapter 11. You know, those cloud of witnesses, those believers, the heroes that, that stood for God, that got results in their life. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. So that's, those are the first two keys, laying aside every weight, things that are going to hold us back. We lay them aside. It's something that we have to do. We have to do it. We have to lay aside every weight, the things that hold us back and the sin, which just so easily beset us. I thought that was very interesting that it can easily set us back. The sin, the old man nature can easily set us back. We lay it aside and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You know, when you're in a race, this is a marathon and it's not a sprint. So we, we continue to need to have that patience. We need to have that strength and that mental toughness to continue when things are, are challenging. Verse 3. Well, let's, let's read the rest of the verse. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking, and how do we run that race? Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our believing, of the right way of believing, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest we be wary and faint in our own, in your minds. So we just need to consider Jesus Christ and what he accomplished and what he is in us. Let's go to 3 John. Third John. Building your why. Building the why. Why do we do the things we do for God? Verse 3 of 3 John. For I rejoiced greatly, I rejoiced greatly, when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. A great part of joy is, you know, rejoicing greatly when the brethren came, that they heard about the believers walking in truth. You know, John's joy right here was that he, he had the believers walking in truth. They weren't just standing around, they're walking. You know, it's a great joy that we can have as we work with people, as we work and we share the word. There's great joy in being able to see believers get delivered, get delivered and getting answers to prayer and being able to walk in truth. You know, in verse, verse four, I have no greater joy than to hear my children walk in truth. I see this as a twofold aspect. Number one, John. You know, the Apostle John having no greater joy, you know, and no greater joy than to hear that the believers were walking in truth. They're doing the word. You know, and that's God's heart for us, too. He wants us to walk in truth. He wants us to do it, to live it. It's a spiritual quality that we can continue to develop. Let's go to Hebrews chapter. No, nope, not Hebrews. <laughs> Psalm. Psalms. We're going to go to the book of Psalms and in Psalm 16. We 
see more of this why, why we do what we do and why we want to develop a heart of taking a stand and being able to fight through when things are not happy, when things aren't fun, but we can con continue to have that spiritual quality of joy in our lives. I thought this was really eye-opening. This verse really blessed me. A couple of verses. So Psalm, Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Again, that's something that we can do. We can set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Verse nine, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Verse 10, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither shalt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. This is the prophecy of Jesus Christ and him not seeing corruption. Verse 11, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. We get fullness of joy as we continue to share our hearts in our life and being in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Fullness of joy. That's something I want. I want that fullness of joy. It's a great motivating factor. Just having and knowing that we have that fullness of joy as we have, if we stay in the presence with God, if we stay tied in with our Heavenly Father. Let's go to Psalm 105. Again, these are keys that I've been working on in my life to develop strength, mental toughness to, to stick it out when I want to just walk away. <laughs> I just want to, sometimes you just want to quit. God asks us to stay, asks us to stand. I mean, I'm one of those people that when I was growing up, you know, I would ask my mom or my dad or something, why? And they say, because I told you so. I don't go for that. <laughs> it's not something that works for me. It's like, well, why? <laughs> I want to know why. I want to know the why. I want to know the background. I want to get, get the heart of it all. Not just do it because I'm told to. You know, We don't want to just do it because God tells us to. It's, it's more of a heart thing. It's more of a back and forth with our Heavenly Father. Verse 37 of Psalm 105. He brought them forth. This is a whole aspect depicting the Exodus, which uh, we've been studying on Tuesday nights, which has been really good. And I thought this was a good synopsis and a good reminder. Verse 37. He brought them forth also which with silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. That's just amazing to me. It's astounding to think about God's deliverance, our delivering God who delivered and blessed and took care of two and a half million plus people. And there was not one feeble person among them. That's our father. Egypt was glad when they departed. I bet they were very glad. For the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud. This is God spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give them light in the night. I don't know if you've been in the in the desert, but there are times where, you know, during the day it is very hot. And God here is talking about covering. He put a cloud during the day, he gave them shade, he took care of them. And at night, a fire, you know, for for light, but it also was heat, warmed them up, took care of them because it's cold at night. There's lots of extremes in the desert. And God took care of them. He, he knew what they needed. And I like this in verse 40. It says the people asked. It was a little bit more than that. <laughs> they were grumbling. <laughs> God softens it here. And the people asked, 
and he brought forth quail and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock and the waters gushed out. They, the waters ran in the dry places like a river, an abundance of water. God will continue to remind us more and more of him taking care of us. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham, his servant. He brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. This is very, this is great, you know, as far as from a standpoint of God's delivering his people. And it says right here, he brought his people forth with joy. It gave God joy to deliver his people. That's something that's that's comforting for us when it comes to understanding this aspect of joy is that God gets joy blessing us and taking care of us. We can just continue to ask. We can continue to have fellowship with our Heavenly Father. Good days and bad days. Verse 44, he gave them the lands of the heathen and they inherited the labor of the people that they might observe his statutes. Why did he do all this? So that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. God delivered his people so that they could, you know, and, and in delivering them, it gave him great joy to deliver his people. And he did it so that they could just do the word, so that they could be successful. God puts us in a position to be successful day in and day out as we rely on him. Let's go to Jeremiah 15. more of developing an aspect of the why why we do what we do the the purpose the motivating factors for why we do what we do why we stay faithful why we stand for god you know because god blesses us you know and this is explains and it re, you know it's a reminder reminder to me jeremiah 15 verse 16 thy words were found and i did eat them and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. It was the word that blessed him. And in this period of time, they had lost the word. The, the king cut it up. There wasn't an abundance of the word. And when they found a, a scroll in the ruins, Jeremiah here is saying that the word was found. And I did eat them, the words of God. He ate them. He digested them. He rejoiced in his heart, joy and rejoicing when he found the word. It's the word that gives us the, the strength and the vitality to continue going when we don't want to. Let's go to Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 1. You know, the, the world just tends to beat us up. But if we continue to focus on God and his word, we can overcome it. He's put it together for us, and all we have to do is continue to do it. Sometimes that's harder than I think it should be. <laughs> I know that God is faithful, even when I don't feel like reading the word or don't feel like being at fellowship you just continue to stay faithful you continue to continue moving with god and asking god and sharing your heart with god chapter one verse two of thessalonians first thessalonians we give thanks to god always for you all making mention you in our prayers remembering without ceasing your work of believing and labor of love and patience of hope in our lord jesus christ in the sight of god and our father knowing brethren beloved your election of god for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in power and in the holy ghost and in much assurance as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes 
verse 6. For ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word and much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. They received the word. There was lots of affliction. They had lots of affliction and challenges. But they received the word of the Holy Ghost you know, with joy. With joy. It's an inside job. It's just, you know, it's, again, it's something that, you know, God continues to bless us with and give us uh, and the joy. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Acts is after the gospel, not before the gospel. Acts chapter 8, verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. It wasn't just the hearing, it was the seeing, the results, the power that Philip did. Verse 7, for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them and many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed and there was great joy in that city why because the word and the results of the word and continuing to speak the word we can continue to have that joy as we see the results there's a lot of joy when you you know i get excited when i talk to people about the word and they light up or something comes, you know, to where I can meet a need, where I can show them and help them to understand the word. There's great joy in sharing the word. Let's go to Luke chapter 15. I had great joy in that city because there was deliverance. There was deliverance when Philip spoke the word. This is another aspect of joy that I thought was interesting. And in verse 7 of chapter 15 in Luke, for, for I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. And there's joy in heaven when God gets blessed, you know. And there's joy in heaven when we speak the word, when we help people get delivered with the word of God. Let's go to First John chapter 1. First John chapter one, verse four. These things write I unto you, that your joy may be full. Fullness of joy again comes from hearing the word, seeing the word in our lives, seeing it work. Let's go to Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. The fruit of the spirit, one of the aspects of the fruit of the spirit is joy. You know, and how do you how do you get fruit? You know, the fruit of the spirit is by operating the spirit, by manifesting the spirit. And as we do that, we can have joy in our life. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, and in verse 1, Paul talking about the believers. Therefore, my beloved my dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown. So stand ye fast, my dearly beloved. Therefore, my brethren, you know, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown. That was Paul's heart to the believers here, that they were his joy and crown. You know, it, it is part of our joy in life as we continue to make a difference and help people with the word of God to where they can hear the word, where they can see the word, where they can get born again, they can get delivered, they can have a personal relationship with God. I think that was the biggest aspect to me, right? When I first got in, involved with the ministry, involved with the things of God was that I could have a personal individual relationship with god i can ask god questions i can talk with god i can share my heart with god and and he helps me and he shows me those are the things that that sometimes i take for granted but we can continue to strive towards helping other people with the word and that gives us great joy it's great joy to see people get delivered let's finish up in uh, acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 and in verse 24. I brought this up in regards to just seeing Paul's heart. Even though in this aspect, in this, this record, he's off the ball where he was ignoring God's direction. When the believers were trying to tell him not to go to Jerusalem. In verse 24, he says, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. You know, it's great to see that, you know, Paul had such a conviction, such a belief and a stand that, you know, even though he didn't count his life. You know, he still wanted to finish his course with joy. He still wanted to have that effervescence to finish his course, regardless of what happened to his physical life. Um, you know, so we can continue to have those aspects. And again, I wanted to reiterate that part of what we need to do in our life is putting off, laying aside the weight and the sin which holds us back. And then we can run with patience as we continue to keep the promises in the word in our hearts and in our minds. We can stand fast on the word that we know and we can continue to strive to learn more. And we can enjoy God's presence. You know, we get that fullness of joy when we are in God's presence. And those aspects can continue to help us to walk when we just don't feel like it or when we want to walk away you know that we can continue to strive to bring others to the word as we continue to stay faithful at speaking the word and we're involved and we're doing the word that's going to help us to stay on top of things ourselves 
you know, and as we operate the manifestations of the spirit, we can see as we speak in tongues much in our private prayer life, we can continue to see the fruit. And that fruit, part of that fruit is joy. And as we stay faithful, you know, we will get the paycheck that God has promised us. And part of that is the hope of Christ's return. So I want to pray. Thanks, God, for just all you do as you continue to love us and work within us. Thank you for giving us the strength and the understanding, the motivation as we continue day in and day out to walk and talk with you. And I thank you, Father, for the faithfulness that you have in your word that we can continue to stand for you in this day and time and hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.